The film opens with a lovely mother named Lisa, getting home from work in the middle of the night. When Lisa arrives, she looks for her son, Jude, but all she finds is a pair of shoes. Jude quickly hides and tricks Lisa by surprising her in the silence. Lisa returns Sean's phone call a short time later. Sean assures Lisa and Jude that they are secure during their video conference. He also claims that due to his rigorous schedule, he will work late at night. As a result, Lisa gently understands and will care for Jude throughout the night. When it's time to sleep, Lisa goes to Jude and leaves him a goodnight message. She soothes Jude's fear by giving him a teddy bear to embrace as they sleep. Lisa awakens in the middle of the night due to a clattering sound. She notices shadows and starts seeking for Jude but Lisa soon notices that Jude is no longer in his bed. She traverses the entire home, convinced that it is another joke. Lisa notices Jude hiding and switches on the light. A dreadful tension grows, as Jude whispers to Lisa not to turn on the light, but Lisa does so, only to be ambushed by robbers. Lisa tries to struggle back, as Jude hits the alarm. Lisa manages to knock down one of the thieves while gathering her power, but the other one crushes Lisa's skull, rendering her comatose. As this occurs, Jude helplessly observes Lisa collapse on the floor. After five months, tremendous changes occur in their current life as a result of their traumatic history. Jude is now having a session with a therapist. Jude is unable to talk at this time, and must rely on sketching and writing to communicate. According to the therapist, Jude acquired mutism as a result of stress and worry, which took away his urge to talk. The couple then discuss strategies to help Jude with the therapist. The family eats together and is filled with stillness throughout supper. Lisa has discomfort in her head before sleeping, indicating the effects of her head trauma. Sean suggests moving to a different location so Jude and Lisa can recuperate quicker. Later, Jude enters with the phrase, sleep with you scribbled in his paper, indicating that he wants to spend time with his parents. While they are all sleeping, a ruckus occurs when Lisa is suffocated by the same burglar. Sean thankfully saves her from the awful nightmare by waking her up, and Jude recalls the horrific past once more. The next day, the entire family chooses to go to the countryside in search of a fresh start. A female caretaker greets them and provides immediate assistance at the guest house. They enter the home, and a man from afar casts a perplexing gaze. Sean then cheerfully proposes some nature adventures. They then explore the neighboring woodland, eventually arriving at the main home, Glenview Estate. Meanwhile, Jude is distracted by the eerie atmosphere. Following numerous murmurs, an inexplicable tension emerges as the voices declare his name and invite him to follow. Jude follows the voices, which lead him to a doll's hand. After that, Jude crawls through the earth in search of the buried toy, only to discover a porcelain doll in a little coffin. As this occurs, the pair becomes aware that Jude is not present. They discover Jude is missing as they attempt to explore the house. Concerned, they both rush to find Jude in the odd location. Jude then comes, holding the porcelain doll. When Lisa asks whether Jude would like to take it home, Jude shakes his head. Lisa starts washing and wiping the dirt off the porcelain doll as soon as she gets home. After a few moments, Jude pulls a piece of paper from his pocket, only to find a list of rules signifying a hidden reality. Lisa notices that the porcelain doll appears to have been damaged previously due to the traces. Lisa then discovers intriguing landscapes as they prepare to sleep. She notices the porcelain doll staring at her in the mirror's image, but when she checks again, everything looks normal. Lisa awakens the next morning to the lovely sound of a piano. She notices Jude playing the piano, and immediately recognizes the porcelain doll in new clothes. She also compliments Jude for changing the porcelain doll's clothes, but Jude shakes his head, claiming that he did not. Jude writes the words in the woods in his notepad at breakfast to answer the question. However, the aforementioned query looks to have been written by someone else. Sean afterwards goes to Jude to inquire about the name of the porcelain doll. In answer, Jude indicates the word, Brahms. He also writes, he told me, hinting that it is not his idea. Lisa invites Jude to study, but he prefers to be in the woods. Jude hears the whispering again as they travel through the summer woods. He follows the voices that lead them to the casket where they discovered Brahms. A neighbor and his dog soon come, distracting them. Lisa apologizes for being new to the area and the neighbor presents his vicious dog. Surprisingly, the dog glares aggressively at Brahms, making a perplexing indication. After that, a neighbor walks Lisa and Jude back to their house from the woods. Sean greets them as they arrive. As he walks away, the neighbor casts a peek at Brahms as if danger is imminent. At night, Lisa confides in her husband about Brahms' creepiness, but Sean suggests that it's not the doll's fault, but rather her own. Lisa feels offended and goes away. When Lisa enters her room, she overhears Jude conversing with Brahms. She overhears Jude describe Brahms' dislike towards the dog. The couple, pleased with Jude's improvement, listens in through the doorway. Lisa enters the room, and Jude stops speaking. They keep asking Jude strange questions, but Jude merely nods his head and writes the answers down. As a result, Jude reveals that Brahms despises the neighbor's dog. The pair is taken aback and decides to give Jude additional time with Brahms. Lisa later opens her eyes and roams the home while everyone is asleep. A burglar strangles her while she is looking at Brahms, causing a ruckus. Sean, in the meantime, saves her from sleepwalking and a terrifying nightmare. She then approaches Jude, who is sobbing in the corner. When Lisa phones him, Jude responds by wearing a porcelain mask. 
However, Lisa awakens to discover that it was all a dream. When she goes inside Jude's room, she finds Brahm still there. She returns to sleep while Sean comforts her. On a bright day, the entire family gathers for breakfast. Lisa recognizes Jude's notepad, which has various rules, the last of which is always and forever. Lisa subsequently goes into Jude's room to retrieve the laundry. She approaches Jude after seeing the teddy bear torn and shredded. The pair then discuss the smashed junk toy with Jude. Jude shakes his head, denying that he destroyed it. Lisa believes Jude is lying, so she sends him to his room and leaves Brahms at the sala. A terrible tension builds a little later. When Lisa detects Brahms moving its head toward her, she believes that it is the product of hallucinations. Lisa is soon distracted by the television noise. When she switches off the television, she notices the remote next to Brahms. Lisa believes Jude is teasing and aggravating her. She then goes to Jude's room and scolds him, but Jude claims he never came out. With all of the unusual occurrences, Lisa approaches Brahms to test if it is moving or alive, but no movement is seen. She resumes her reading, till she hears footsteps coming from the living room. She follows the commotion and enters the locker room, warning Jude to open the door. When she enters the locked door, she is astounded to observe Brahms seated there, hinting at a strange terror. Jude goes to Lisa's room that night to apologize. He apologizes for frightening her. He also conveys his regret to Brahms. As a result, Lisa begins to overthink by sharing her strange encounters with her spouse. The couple consults their therapist about Jude one day. The therapist adds that a doll may act as a buddy and will aid Jude in his recovery from the trauma. Lisa begins researching the eerie Brahms on the internet in the afternoon. She navigates to the website that identifies the history and code of an antique doll. Lisa discovers how to verify an antique doll's code and reads about the tragic history of Glenview Estate in just a few seconds of browsing. She learns that a man formerly lived behind the walls. Jude is sketching something in his notepad at the same time. In the backyard, Jude is greeted by a neighbor. Jude shares a similar name as Brahms, yet neighbor looks unsurprised after hearing the term Brahms. Uncomfortably, the neighbor glances at the doll as if he recognizes it. Lisa stops them with the hidden secret and takes Jude inside. Lisa is still awake one night. While everyone else is sleeping, she goes to Jude's room to check Brahms' code. She then copies the code H606 on Brahms' foot and examines the doll further. Later, Brahms' mouth begins to release many flies, prompting Lisa to scream. Thus, Sean and Jude are woken, but the flies have vanished, leading them to believe Lisa is delusory. Lisa inputs the code the next day, but receives no results. She looks for Jude, but finds no one. Lisa sees frightening pictures when scanning the journal. She comes upon a sketch of a lifeless dog and a youngster murdering his mother and father. She also discovers messages, stating that Jude and Brahms should be together forever. Jude, dressed in a black suit, enters the room shortly. Lisa then exits the building and asks Jude to come to supper in 15 minutes. Jude tries to bring Brahms to the table over supper. Sean calmly allows it when Lisa wants to reject the idea. Sean mentions during their meal that he would invite Jude's relatives and family to a get-together. In response, Jude explains that no guests are permitted, under Brahms' rule. Lisa then says that their decisions are more important than the dolls. Then Jude becomes enraged and refuses to eat. Lisa instructs Jude to leave the table only once he has finished eating. She also takes away the plates from in front of the doll. As Lisa calms herself in the kitchen, a big commotion happens. As she runs back to Jude, she sees the table turned upside down. Jude writes in his notebook that says they shouldn't have angered Brahms. Confused, Lisa shows the violent drawings she found in Jude's room, but the drawings are no longer there. Sean blames Lisa's emotional state, but promises to throw the doll away. Meanwhile, the neighbor is in the woods when he discovers his dog lifeless. As morning approaches, Lisa and Sean go to Jude's room and only find alarming writing in his notepad. Horrified, they search around the house to find Jude. Lisa, taking up the courage, searches the Glenview estate after finding the door open. She walks around and finally finds Brahms and Jude in a room. Jude is wearing a porcelain mask, terrifying Lisa. However, when he starts speaking, Lisa embraces him in joy. Soon, Sean and the neighbor also find them, and Sean is happy to hear his son speak again. The neighbor shares a brief history of the house and the people who lived there. He talks about the young boy, who is said to have assassinated a little girl and lived in the walls for years. He ends the story by saying the entire family has now passed away, including the boy. The next day, Jude has a consultation with his therapist. He speaks about himself, as well as Brahms, whom he introduces as his friend, who has lived with several families before. After a session with Jude, the therapist talks with Lisa and Sean. They make appointments to visit her once the guests leave. Soon, the guests arrive, and Jude is not happy about it. Jude, along with his two cousins, go to play in their yard when Will starts making fun of Jude and the doll. Soon, Will is strangely injured as the two boys fight over the doll. Lisa becomes even more agitated as she witnesses the entire thing unfold. That night, she comforts a terrified Jude, who says that Brahms wants to lock him inside the mansion. As she stares at Brahms in the front yard, she tries calling the therapist, who doesn't answer. Later, Lisa thinks of flipping the numbers she saw on Brahms' foot and finds a pedifying truth about a doll that turns kids violent. She finds that the cycle continues when the doll is present. She reads through the stages of what she thinks is the possession by the doll. At first there are whispers, next there is the movement, and the last stage is complete transformation into murderers. 
Meanwhile, Sean meets a stranger in a convenience store, who informs him that the Glenview estate was bought by the man they know as the neighbor. Worried for the safety of his family, Sean rushes back home. In the house, Lisa finds Jude and Brahms are once again missing. She also is held at gunpoint by the neighbor, who finally discloses that he has been hearing whispers too. Lisa later punches the neighbor in the head and demands to know where Jude is. The neighbor informs her that it will be over soon and that Brahms and Jude are going to be one. She breaks free and rushes to the mansion to hunt for Jude. Sean discovers Lisa and Jude in the basement and uses a croquet mallet on Brahms, revealing a demonic, decaying place beneath his face. The neighbor suddenly starts to grow afraid and claims that it will never be finished and that Brahms will take out the family's inability to follow the rules on him. After that, a furnace bursts, incinerating him but leaving the rest of the family uninjured. Jude snatches Brahms and tosses him into the fire. Lisa, Sean, and Jude are soon back at their city home, and everything appears to be usual. When Jude is left alone in his room, he goes to his dresser and puts on a porcelain mask. He bids Brahms good night and assures him that everything will be okay as long as his family respects the rules. 